How you doing today? Um, so today I want to talk about uh, dynamic timing of tasks. So I have a library that's uh, meant primarily for like Windows services, so like background tasks. Uh, but the idea being that uh, they can vary their timing based on uh, what they're experiencing in terms of workload. So a big reason why you'd want to do this is uh, if you're DQing. Um, or have a mechanism where you may or may not have work to do. Um, so in the case of a queue, uh, the dequeuer would go and look at the queue and if it doesn't pull down a message, uh, it would actually determine that there was no work to be done and therefore um, slow down over time. So there's a couple models that I've built um, that enable you to, to do this. Um, the big one being that um, you might find yourself and we're just going to do like a time graph here. Um, so the calls um, will have varying frequency um, over time. Um, but the big thing is, is that they will be able to slow down from, let's say they start at one second, and then you can cap it at, say, like 30 seconds. Uh, so least frequency would be 30 seconds. Um, so it would vary between the one and the 30 seconds. Um, and as soon as it gets work, um, it can snap back down to the one second and then again try to try to slow down. If there was always work coming in, then it would just stay at the, the one second level. Um, so really, really um, great usage pattern um, if you're working with queues, um, especially in the sense that I've done a lot in terms of like dev environments um, and then let's say a QA environment um, and then a production environment um, where your dev and your QA, um, this time, this time frame that your DQers are running um, is actually costing money. Um, so if production needs to run at a rate of one second, that's great. Obviously, um, it's okay to spend that money. Whereas your dev and your test environments, um, they really don't need to be that active, especially like at night. Uh, typically, you're not having developers with large workloads uh, that need to be DQ'd. Um, so this is really, truly just a cost savings up here um, where your server is able to slow down uh, and, and slowly do the work. Now I'm showing you kind of one of the, the, the timings that I have. This is kind of an exponential timing. Um, I also have in my library uh, a linear timing, so that would give you more of like a straight line. Um, graphing kind of the same data there where this is the point that it gets work, it goes back to the minimum time frame. Um, there's a couple other ones too. There's, so those are the actual timing patterns. There's also a class that'll let you do an adaptive timing and adaptive to me means that um, it's actually gonna try to, to go only one step greater or one step less at a time. Um, so it, it's trying to find that natural frequency that messages are being um, entered into a queue, let's say. Um, so at this point it got a message, at this point it didn't, at this point it did, it didn't, it did, it didn't. And it just kind of works like that. What you're getting is a fairly even um, pattern of usage over time. Um, and it's really nice because it will come down to the one second if it needs to. Um, but if messages are only coming in every two or three seconds, then it's going to end up following a pattern really close to that every two seconds, every three seconds, every one second kind of timeline going back and forth. Um, so that's really great um, if you're not if you're if you're able to have the frequency back off just just slightly. And again, that'll save you that'll save you quite a bit of cost over over the lifetime of of your services. Um, so I really recommend looking at uh, adaptive patterns. Um, adaptive timing patterns, um, especially when working with a queue. It also, you have to define basically this, uh, so the minimum and the maximum. And the minimum's gonna, it's gonna start at that rate, um, and it's gonna try to go that fast, um, but if there isn't work, it'll just keep coming back up to the slower speeds. Um, so that's where you'll get your savings from. Um, but again, you can set these. So if you're concerned that 30 seconds is way too long, um, you can even put this at 10 seconds. And even that potentially could save you a fair bit of, a fair bit of money. 
Um, and still, again, if your production needs that one second, then it's, it's probably going to stay in a pattern way closer to that one second. So this is a really great um, pattern. You can think of using it for a lot of different things where you have um, data that may or may not be needed to be worked on. Um, but a big thing here is, is like a queue. And uh, when a queue is empty, do you really want to go and attack that queue at a really high frequency? Um, I hope this was interesting. I'll throw some links to the open source projects where you can look at the source code or else uh, just grab the NuGet um, and just implement these. These are really good cost saving measures that you can do when working with uh, Azure storage queues and also the service bus as well. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we'll chat soon. Have a good day.